prehistoric landscapes, thriving wildlife, bustling cities, and a wealth of cultural experiences. Australia's Northern Territory encompasses much of what gives Australia its endless appeal and unlimited beauty. Whether it's exploring the sun-baked deserts, or the enormous winding tropical coastlines, a journey through the Northern Territory is a journey through history itself. From the epic deserts of Central Australia, to Darwin, the tropical gateway to Asia, the Northern Territory is an explorer's paradise. Over the next half an hour, we'll guide you from Darwin, a city that has been destroyed and rebuilt twice in its short lifetime, to the mighty Uluru, also known as Ayers Rock, the cultural centre of ancient Australia. Wildlife, landscapes, history and a thriving hub of tourism and trade, all waiting for us in the Northern Territory. Despite its enormous size, the Northern Territory is the most sparsely populated of all Australian states and territories. Only a couple of hundred thousand people live in an area that covers one and a half million square miles, twice the size of France and six times the size of the UK. Most of the territory's population live in Darwin, where our journey begins. The most northern city of Australia is an important hub of trade, commerce, defence and culture. It also acts as the country's launching pad to Asia and is closer to Bali than to Sydney. In 1839, the first Europeans to arrive in this vast country's top end were the crew of the HMS Beagle. Their commander, John Lord Stokes, was so taken with the harbour's natural beauty that he decided to name it after a guest he had become friendly with on an earlier voyage, a young botanist named Charles Darwin. The area was difficult to settle due to the tropical climate and perilous crocodiles. But the port of Darwin grew to become a key strategic location in the history of Australia and the British Empire. However, Darwin's proximity to Asia came at a price. As a key location for the Allies fighting in the Pacific during the Second World War, it became the target of ferocious bombing. In 1942, nearly 200 Japanese aircraft launched a series of devastating air raids on Darwin in what was the first and largest single attack in Australia's history. The planes targeted Allied ships in the harbour, as well as airfields and many other civilian and military installations. Hundreds of people died in the attacks and the city was almost levelled. But the city was rebuilt. Darwin lived on after the war, until in the 1970s it bore the brunt of another assault, this time from the elements. On Christmas Day in 1974, Cyclone Tracy hit Darwin hard. Instruments measured winds of nearly 150 miles an hour, disrupting communications and destroying buildings. Many people were caught unprepared and the tropical cyclone claimed 65 lives the city was almost completely destroyed. But again, Darwin was rebuilt. Despite its turbulent history, the city today is alive with the lights and sounds of a busy cultural scene. The bars and restaurants along Mitchell Street throng with both locals and tourists. Festivals that celebrate art, music, sport and food can be seen all across Darwin and the surrounding area. Hundreds flock to the Mindil Beach Sunset Markets every Thursday and Sunday evening throughout the dry season. The usually pristine beach and surrounding area is taken over by lines of stalls filling the air with the smell of food.
It's a spectacular effort to bring the culture of Asia's night markets to tropical Darwin and the lively social culture that goes with it. Cuisine from all over the world, from Spain and Sri Lanka to Mexico and Japan, is dished out to customers against a backdrop of the setting sun. Amongst it all, local vendors sell art and crafts. Both European and Aboriginal art is available here, making the markets a fascinating place where cultures and livelihoods come together. When night falls, the entertainment begins and the place fills with fire dancers and acrobats. There's an air of mystery, excitement and burlesque. Venture beyond Darwin, however, and you'll find a different story. The beautiful Darwin Harbour thrives with marine life. Cruisers and fishing boats drift across the glittering water a tranquil place where locals and tourists alike come to fish, sail and relax. Bear Sand Island, situated southwest of the city, is a vast breeding ground for Australian flatback turtles. The animals return each winter to lay hundreds of eggs. The island and surrounding marine life activity is monitored carefully by scientists. As well as being a destination for eco tours and sustainable tourism activities. Drive a few hours east down the Arnhem Highway and you'll arrive at one of the gems in the crown of the Northern Territory Kakadu National Park. The World Heritage listed national park is the largest in Australia covering 12 and a half thousand square miles, nearly half the size of Switzerland. This magnificent land is co-managed between Parks Australia and Aboriginal people, descendants of those who have lived here for more than 50,000 years. Aborigines here have a deep spiritual connection with the land that dates back to the world's creation in their culture. Their impact on the landscape can be seen by this rock art, the oldest of which can be traced back nearly 20,000 years. Aboriginal people still live in Kakadu today, with some spending time fishing, hunting and living in the traditional ways of their ancestors. Kakadu is home to a sublime collection of flora and fauna. Around 2,000 types of plants, from coastal mangroves to open woodland and billabongs, hold a fascinating selection of birds and mammals. With over 400 species of bird, including 14 rare species, this perfect combination of ecosystems makes Kakadu one of the greatest natural wonders of the world. But lurking in the lush, pristine waterways of the Northern Territory is a hidden threat. Crocodiles. These apex predators have existed since dinosaurs walked the earth and are greatly respected by the people who live and work here today. Crocodiles stalk their prey from just below the surface of the water, waiting for the perfect time to strike. Dominating the rivers and the coast, they attract tourists from all over the world who come to see these magnificent beasts in the wild. The enormous, pristine environment provides opportunities for hiking, camping, fishing and swimming. The cascading waterfalls, clear rivers and vast woodlands are a world away from the lively bars of Darwin. But this juxtaposition is what gives the Northern Territory its appeal. On the fringes of Kakadu National Park, 
Arnhem Land is a vast, unspoiled wilderness, bursting with life and rich Aboriginal culture. Arnhem Land is the last great Aboriginal reserve, home to around 17,000 Aboriginal people living in outstations scattered throughout this overwhelmingly large, remote corner of the territory. These people live in a blend of European-style Australian life and traditional Aboriginal culture. On Bremer Island, East Arnhem Land, the Banu Banu Eco Lodge offers a taste of this lifestyle. With no internet or mobile phone reception, this indigenous-owned coastal lodge is a popular retreat for both locals and tourists seeking respite from everyday life. Much of the tourist industry in the Northern Territory is based on the Aboriginal experience, with hotels like the Walkabout Lodge on the Gove Peninsula offering an insight into local indigenous culture, as well as being a launching pad for the rugged nature of the surrounding areas. It was here in Arnhem Land that one of the most iconic symbols of Australian Aboriginal culture was invented, the didgeridoo. The use of this musical instrument can be dated back to around 40,000 years, suggesting it might be the oldest musical instrument on Earth. Didgeridoos are still handcrafted across the Northern Territory, even today. Beautiful works of art as well as musical instruments. Arnhem Land provides a wealth of opportunities to explore the oldest continuing civilization on Earth. Rock art that dates back to 50,000 years, traditionally made baskets and indigenous paintings are all part of this rich tapestry of indigenous life in the Northern Territory. The indigenous culture is intertwined with the history of the landscape. The ancient mountains and cliff tops are still explored today. Our road turns south, where the tropical woodlands meet the fringes of the stunning outback in Catherine, home to Nitmaluk National Park. The Catherine region is a beautiful tapestry of glittering waterfalls, huge sandstone gorges and hot springs. It's an ancient region thriving with life, and hidden gems reward curious travellers heading off the beaten track. The Jat Buller Trail is a five-day hike that weaves its way through one of the oldest landscapes on the planet, a journey that feels like stepping back in time. The Catherine River rolls ponderously south from Kakadu, carving out the 13 valleys that together make up Catherine Gorge. Tourists and locals alike trade the drinking and clubbing of Darwin for the fishing, canoeing and swimming of Catherine. <laughs> Travel south still, and the rugged cliffs and waterfalls disappear, giving way to the enormous vistas of central Australia. Desert rolls endlessly in all directions. It's an enormous region, but beautiful sites and areas of spiritual and geological significance can be found here. Sites like Kalu Kalu, also known as Devil's Marbles. Nearby is the town of Tennant Creek, built as a key stage of one of the greatest feats of Australian engineering, the Overland Telegraph Line. In the mid-19th century, to connect the remote settlements around the country, a telegraph line was built that ran from Adelaide on the south coast to Darwin in the far north, crossing over 2,000 miles of harsh desert, some of the most brutal terrain on the planet. The telegraph line followed the route taken by early explorers and pioneers venturing deep into the unexplored centre of Australia, before finally arriving at Darwin. Here the telegraph connected to an enormous network of undersea cables, and gave Australia almost instantaneous communication with Britain and the rest of the world. The overland telegraph line put Australia on the map. Tennant Creek started life as a repeater station, 
built as one of several waypoints along the line designed to boost the signal as telegrams journeyed back and forth. Today the telegraph station is a museum where visitors can learn more about the settlement's humble beginnings as well as life on the Australian frontier. It's a similar story in the city of Alice Springs. A vibrant oasis of culture, Alice Springs is the gateway to the outback, Australia's red centre. Standing proudly in stark contrast with the bright, sunburned desert, Alice Springs is a green, tranquil home for over 20,000 people. It seems a strange place to find a city. Pleasant cafes, busy museums and fashionable bars aren't the usual images conjured by thinking of outback central Australia. But the Alice is the bustling centre of a huge range of events, festivals, shows, museums and galleries. The dry bed of the River Todd plays host to a quirky event that sums up the sense of humour of the Alice Springs locals. The Henley on Todd Regatta also takes place on the riverbed, an amusing nod to the Royal Regatta in Henley on Thames. Teams set to work building their own boats to race and compete on the river. It's a regatta, Northern Territory style. Another famous Alice Springs event, the Camel Cup, is a race between camel riders that has grown from a throwaway joke between two friends to a major annual event over the last few decades. It's now an iconic part of life in Alice Springs, with the whole town turning out for camel racing, dancing and celebrating. But Alice Springs is known as the gateway to the outback for a reason. For tourists and locals alike, Alice Springs is the beginning of the road to some of the most incredible natural wonders in the whole of Australia. From here, the West Macdonald Ranges open up a world of creeks and swimming holes, a popular weekend retreat for the locals of the Alice. The deep, cool water is the centre of activity all through the year, as people come here to swim and relax in the safe gorges of Ellery Creek and Ormiston Gorge. Further south, towering over dense palm forests and a pondering creek is Kings Canyon, an enormous formation of bright red rock formed over millions of years. The canyon is a popular hiking route for tourists and explorers alike, with climbers rewarded with spectacular views of the outback at the summit. The road continues, and the Red Centre Way takes travellers from Kings Canyon across to one of the most iconic sites in the whole of Australia. Uluru. This magnificent geological formation is, for many, the symbol of Australia itself. Situated in the heart of Uluru Katajuta National Park, Uluru, also known as Ayers Rock, is an area of enormous cultural significance for the local indigenous people. Uluru is the largest single monolith in the world. This huge sandstone formation is held in high regard by Aboriginal people, not just locally, but all across Australia. The shapes in the rock have been the subject of creation stories in Aboriginal culture, known as the Dreamtime, for thousands of years. Thrilling stories about animals, bad spirits and early Aboriginal people are still told by elders today. Fresh springs and waterfalls have attracted people and animals to Uluru for generations. Historic Aboriginal rock art can be seen all around Uluru, with rock faces daubed in paint mixed from natural minerals and water or animal fat. It's impossible to get a sense of the scale and wonder that comes from Uluru without hiking around it. But when the sun goes down, the rock's energy that has captivated indigenous people for thousands of years can be felt even today. Uluru is a sacred place, the mecca of Australian Aboriginals. The nearby Cultural Information Centre receives letters from previous visitors, people who have taken a stone or a rock from Uluru and then suffered bad fortune in their work or personal lives. These people have then returned the rock to Uluru Katajuta National Park, along with a letter of apology, believing that taking the rock in the first place has been the cause of their misfortune. A few miles from Uluru is its sister attraction, Katajuta. Katajuta, or the Olgas, is a group of 36 dome sandstone rocks thought to be around 500 million years old. The mesmerizing shapes and ochre color have captivated locals and travelers for generations. 
In the local language, Katajuta means many heads. The area is still managed by indigenous people today, with Aboriginal guides and rangers working alongside white Australians to preserve the geological and cultural importance of this remarkable place. The majesty of Uluru and Katajuta can't be denied. With the setting sun, the rocks come alive. The red sandstone seems to glow, lighting up the landscape like a beacon. We've traveled from tropical Darwin to mystical Uluru, from oceans to outback. Our journey might end here, but the road does not. The explorer's way continues south, crossing miles of desert and the state border deep into South Australia and its capital city, Adelaide. It's a world of incredible landscapes, diverse and unique wildlife, and a wealth of exciting festivals. From there, a whole new journey awaits.